All goes according to plan. The trolleys will reappear in El Paso, Texas after a 12-year absence. The city's first rail system began in 1882 with a group of mule cars linking El Paso and Juarez. It consisted of a stable, 50 animals, and operated over three and a half miles of track. In 1902, the mule cars were replaced with open-air electric cars similar to the famed San Francisco cable cars. By the early 1920s, the fleet was more than 100 cars running over 60 miles of track. Within the decade, the use of the trolleys began to decline as buses were put into service. In 1937, a majority of the streetcars were abandoned. By 1940, only the Fort Bliss, Washington Park, and Juarez lines remained. In 1950, all but the Juarez route were discontinued. The international route remained until 1973 when the Mexican government revoked the franchise rights into Mexico. The limited service hung on until 1974 in the downtown area. This marked the end of the electric trolley in El Paso. San Francisco, Detroit, Seattle, and New Orleans and San Diego are but a few of the cities that have returned to light rail public transportation. Trolleys are clean, efficient, and non-polluting. The Paso del Norte Streetcar Preservation Society proposes to maintain the historical significance of the Paso Juarez Corridor through refurbishing and operating the trolley system along the original tracks of El Paso. Appropriately, this is the last day of the El Paso trolley cars in the barn. Today is Friday, March the 21st, 1986. The trolley that I'm sitting in is part of the nine car fleet, all that remains of the once 20 car fleet of the El Paso trolleys. Tomorrow morning at approximately 6 a.m., we will commence the procedure to move the cars to the new location, which will be at the Santa Fe Bridge on Santa Fe Street, or better known as the Old Chamizal Court. The City Council has deemed this car barn that we're in as the new maintenance facility for the, for the El Paso Fire Department. So as a result, we have to vacate the cars from the premises starting tomorrow. The cars we moved Saturday uh, via flatbed truck, and if all uh, goes according to plan, all the nine cars will be out here tomorrow without any problems. There's approximately one mile of track from the Santa Fe Bridge to the site of the Paso del Norte Hotel, which is what the Paso del Norte Streetcar Society plans to use as the first line. Uh, there's overhead wire that needs to be strung up and a few maintenance procedures to uh, ascertain which one of the nine cars will be able to operate. The El Paso trolley cars have been a part of El Paso his, El Paso's history for approximately 86 years. And in 1974 was the last year that these trolleys were operating in the streets of El Paso. So after an, an absence of approximately 11 to 12 years, the trolleys hopefully will run again. This car that I'm sitting in is known as a PCC trolley. Directly to my left, is the pits, which is essential for all trolley repairs. In order to perform running maintenance such as brakes, things on the trucks, and I hope I make this without breaking my neck, your workman would descend down here in the pits, which is lighted, and could get underneath here to work on his track brakes, wheel brakes, change out brake shoes, make running repairs, see if wheels were cracked, chip flanges, check the frame for dents, cracks, and anything else. Which brings another reason that if the car barns leave this particular facility, I'll be with you in just a minute. If the car barn, the cars leave this car barn, we will have no pits. And when you have no pits, you have no mechanical ability. These cars cannot be repaired. I cannot understand why the city council in all its infinite wisdom cannot see past their noses. But as a mere volunteer, I don't make those decisions. Really the pits. This device directly in back of me was what you call one of the first sprinkler systems in El Paso. Car barns were notorious for 
fires in the early days, so in order to protect the trolley cars and the structure, a uh, sprinkler system was devised so in case something would catch fire during the night, it would be readily extinguished. According to the plate on the sprinkler system, it was patented in 1904. The car barn was built in 1902, so shortly after that, El Paso received a very brand new newfangled sprinkler system. All this is a, when the trolleys do leave this barn, all this, if the fire department takes over, hopefully will be preserved. Otherwise, probably end up in the junkyard or somebody's ashtray. The trolley that you see in back of me is known as the PCC trolley. And the word PCC stands for President Conference Committee. That's the name of these trolleys and how that came about was in 1929, the Electric uh, President's Commission doing a study on the feasibility of creating a new streetcar came up with the idea of the PCC trolley. At that time, the streetcar industry in the, <coughs> in the US was facing a number of problems obsolescence, uh, design, track maintenance, and various other problems that was bringing the streetcar industry into a rather self-destructive decline. The design of these cars was implemented to eliminate a lot of those problems. <clears throat> For instance, on the braking part, on this type of truck, the design was so revolutionary in 1936 that uh, no other trolley had had this type of truck. This item right here is known as a track brake, which was designed to become magnetically attracted to the track along with the brake shoes. So you had uh, two systems. You had your brake shoes and this magnetically, I would say magnetically operated track brake. On some of the later models, you had what you call regenerative braking or dynamic braking. The purpose of this, since these cars were designed for such a high speed, that the cars could virtually be stopped on a dime. There is one story that when they built the present Santa Fe and Stanton Street bridges, that they had uh, started to use the track brake on these cars, and some of the motormen had not used the track brake in quite a number of years. Well, the car that was coming down the bridge was loaded with quite a few passengers and when the motorman hit the track brake nearly all of the passengers were propelled through the windshield. <coughs> Fortunately there were no injuries. The design on these particular trolleys such as on the roof, these cars are equipped with a front trolley pole and this was uh, necessary as the cars came out of the barn, they had to run backwards towards San Antonio Street. So in order to accomplish that mean, the motorman would have to change ends. And when he changed ends, I'll try to do this with one hand, I don't know how successful I'll be, he would pull the trolley pole down to where he'd become disengaged, and if I can do this with one hand, I'll be, there we go. Now you're ready to run backwards. Before these cars came to El Paso, San Diego Electric, who was the original owner of these cars, equipped these cars with the front end trolley pole in 1949. These cars arrived by rail in April of 1950 in the Dallas Street Yards of the Southern Pacific Railroad and have been here ever since. Originally, there were 20 cars, the 1500 to the 1519. There are only nine cars left. The 15, 1511 that you see here, the 1506, the 15, uh, well, we'll get a closer number here. The 1513, the 1514, the 1515, and the other four numbers I'll quote to you as soon as we go into the uh, North Bay part of the car barn. Uh -huh. 
We're standing in what is known as the machine shop. In this uh, area, they could just about rebuild a streetcar if it became necessary. All these machines that you see in back of me were at uh, one time connected. They're all belt driven. You look on this uh, particular glass cutter, I glass cutter, wood cutter, I don't really know which. Uh, there was a belt that connected this machine to that pulley. And your series of pulleys were eventually connected to that motor that you see standing on that platform up there toward the wall. So everything here is belt driven. If you had to cut glass for a trolley car, you'd step over to this contraption. And mind you, I'm merely guessing. Uh, take your glass, adjust your blade or your sights, and go to work. The machine shop that we're in is not the original. The uh, tracks, as you can see, went all the way to the rear of the car barn, as did on, on the other bay. Uh, this was probably the original carpenter shop. The early trolley cars in El Paso were made of wood, so whatever pieces of wood or benches or roofs uh, that had to be uh, refurbished, the trolley cars would come, well, all the way to the rear wall. Later on, the platform from where you're getting this view was added on later. The bottom part for you know miscellaneous parts, uh, things like trolley, uh, trolley poles, wheels, door parts, uh, things for the seats, uh, you name it, just miscellaneous shop. As you look around, it's kind of sad to see it. this once busy shop is strangely quiet with the occasional fluttering of the pigeons who populate this barn who have been most generous in making their presence very well known. standing inside of what is the paint shop on the northernmost track of the what is known as the North Bay. Uh, trolley barns <clears throat> were always equipped with some sort of painting facilities so they could paint the cars as ownership might dictate or for other reasons. This particular uh, paint shop or paint facility that we're looking at was built or added on to the track in about 1966 or 67 and all the cars were repainted pending the completion of the present Chamizal, Stanton, and Santa Fe bridges. The track, if you, as you look out toward the car barn, there was enough space in here for probably five or six more cars, and it's a shame that there was not enough foresight to store more of the cars in the barn, and it would have resulted in less of the cars being scrapped. This is the outside view of the paint shop. As you can see, the size of the doors are almost equal to the size of the present car barn doors. Had the barn been retained, the idea was to take the doors off of the paint shop and utilize the doors for the outside car barn door area. As stated earlier, the car barn paint facility is on what is known as the North Bay. The car barn had a total of three bays, this being the north bay and where the other cars are currently stored, the middle bay and the patio was once known as the south bay. How and when the south bay disappeared is not actually known, other than it may have been a fire some decades back that caused the structure to be cleared away. Behind me is the car 1517. There's a little bit of significance with the 1517 as in 1982, it was earmarked by the El Paso Historical Railroad Board. And the earmark of the proclamation states that the car will be preserved as a permanent display for the city of El Paso. What this also means that if this trolley car project should fail in its entirety and all the cars were, should be scrapped or otherwise disposed of, the 1517 would be the only car that is earmarked for 
preservation by proclamation. This area that you see right, right in front of you is the uh, South Bay. This is the area that one time was enclosed. I guess it's rumored that there was at one time a fire or some kind of damage that caused the damage to the South Bay and uh, the roof was taken down and was remained open for decades. Well, now, when exactly the South Bay disappeared has never been ascertained. A fire barn is probably the likely culprit because many a car barn over the United States was known for a nocturnal blaze that destroyed everything. This is the sad part about this whole trolley car project. This is the 1510, which is a sister of the 1511, which we'll talk about in a minute. There were more cars out here besides the 1510. There was the 1506, the 1502, the 1509, 1517. As you can see, the damage is quite severe. The car has been used as a flop house. The doors are damaged beyond repair. The roof is the part that's most critical to a trolley car, and that's what's damaged the worst. The sad part about this whole thing, this might give you an indication of what El Paso thinks of its trolley cars. I hope that's not the case. There's no excuse for this. But if this has got to be a hot dog stand, from which what we understand it's been sold for scrap to make hot dogs. If someone doesn't step forward like the Paso del Norte Streetcar Society to save the other trolley cars, maybe this is what El Paso deserves. So my name is Paul McNichol. Uh, this past decade, uh, I'm a recent citizen of uh, this city. And in my observations of uh, the transit situation here, which is so similar to a past history of my acquaintanceship with uh, being a mass transit user, uh, such cities as Cleveland, Detroit, and um, in um, other towns um, nearby from the age of as far back as I can remember uh, to presently. I am a SCAT user on occasion. Previously, uh, decades back, mass transit was extremely relevant. I had been a user uh, to the point that not until my return from World War II, uh, the 8th Air Force, I found deemed it uh, time to purchase an automobile. In the face of the trend, uh, the streetcars that ran in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, as in other towns, were being replaced. However, electrical mass transit, um, more than being a fancy, was a very efficient mode and in order to look into the future as we see mass transit a need to come full cycle.
If what you've seen so far in this tour of the El Paso trolley barns interests you, the Paso Del Norte Streetcar Preservation Society would like to have more volunteers. The more uh, volunteers, the better the chance of this project succeeding. The Paso Del Norte Streetcar Preservation Society located at 718 Myrtle Avenue, El Paso. The phone number 532-1166. Anybody who has had an interest in the history of El Paso and transportation or otherwise would be encouraged to contact the society in an effort to save something that has been a part of El Paso's history for the last 86 years. In doing so, we will preserve a bit of history for future generations to understand how El Paso was developed and how it grew up.